Welcome to Big Blend Radio with your hosts, Lisa and Nancy, editors of BigBlendMagazine.com. Welcome to Big Blend Radio with Nancy Reed and Lisa Smith, the mother-daughter travel team and publishers of Big Blend Radio and TV Magazine and Parks and Travel Magazine. You can see them both at BigBlendMagazines.com, and we're very excited because we have a special Mother's Day Big Blend Radio segment today. We like that. Yeah, I know. I know. It's very cool. Uh, we're talking with Dr. Marika Lindholm. She is a trained sociologist and founder of ESME.com, and that stands for Empowering Solo Moms Everywhere. Mm. Do you like mm. that, Nancy? Well, yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course, right? We're very happy to have her join us today. Not only is she going to tell us about her resource website, it's really like a community, not just resource, but a, everyone talking together and uh, working together. Mm. Uh, but she's going to talk about her upcoming new book. It's called We Got This, Solo Mom Stories of Grit, Heart, and Humor. It's coming out September 10th, 2019 through She Writes Press. And it's really a social movement with stories from single moms. There's poetry. There's nice little quotes and uh, really something to connect with, especially definitely if you're a single mom. But welcome, Marika. How are you? I'm well. Nice to be here. Thank you. Yeah. So what led you to starting the website, ESME.com? Well, Esme comes out of my personal experience. I uh, was a professor at Northwestern University and teaching courses on feminization of poverty and issues around, you know, inequality and obviously focusing on what happens when women get divorced or widowed. And then lo and behold, I found myself in that personal situation of being divorced. And um, it was really terrible, like really harder than I'd ever imagined. You know, I had health insurance. I had a lot of, um, you know, I had a lot of opportunity and benefits that other moms maybe didn't have. And it was still really hard. So I made the secret vow in that if I could ever do something to help moms as they're going through this, I would. And flash forward 10 years after that, I was remarried. I had three more kids. <laughs> wow. Uh, and uh, wow. I know, I have five kids. Um, and um, decided to start a website that was a community, and it was for moms who are parenting on their own. So we use the term solo mom because – the moms on our website aren't just um, necessarily what we think of as the traditional single mom, but also moms whose partners are deployed, perhaps incarcerated or living abroad. Or, you know, the modern family is, you know, has takes all kinds of incarnations. So basically it's for any mom who's spending chunks of her time parenting alone, and we try to create a supportive community for them. I think it's awesome. I'm going through the book and reading different stories. Um, it really doesn't matter what your belief system is, religious-wise, uh, religion, spirituality. Um, I mean, it does, obviously, but it isn't it, that being a single mom is a thread that connects everyone, from what I was reading. Everyone has that same feeling, that same, you know, wanting to do the best and the stress levels, the exhaustion, <laughs> the exhaustion. You have to have the humor, right, for all of this. Yeah, I mean, one of the things, uh, as a sociologist, I did focus groups before starting the website, and one of the things, every single focus group, there was a moment where there were tears, and it was when I said to them about wanting to be the best mom you could be, and I didn't know that that would be the phrase that struck a chord, but that is really the essence of you know, all these moms are trying, they're, they're working so hard, tirelessly, two jobs, three jobs, staying up mm -hmm. late at night to get things done, um, you know, driving all over the place, trying to piece together, you know, support. And the exhaustion factor is real. Sleep deprivation is just super rough. Um, I just think that these are our modern day superheroes. I mean, they're not, many of these women did not choose to be solo moms mm -hmm. necessarily, you know, life happens and yeah, you know, that we do have solo moms by choice uh, on our site and in the book. But, you know, I think in terms of honoring, you know, I kind of, I feel that the book is a love letter to solo moms and that the site is the community where they can come and talk to each other and get support and get resources. So 
just really yeah. trying to change the idea of that um, these are women that somehow asked, to, you know, for the situation <laughs> and to, you know, like it just put it put upon themselves. It's actually not. I mean, mo- overwhelmingly, that's not the case. And so I think that that, is, uh, what, that drives me. It drives me every day, actually, just to continue to do the work on their behalf. Mm. Yeah, I love that um, because I know when I got divorced and um, suddenly I'm a single mom with a child, and I decided that I would be more comfortable living in Africa than in the, the United States. It's a weird choice. And so many people thought I was completely out of my mind, and that could be. But it was a it was a thing of there was an automatic look um, from people you've known forever, people you work with, people in your family, people in ex husband's family. Just your social circle was, well, what you do, um, and from the male side was, oh, you must be easy because you're going to be desperate at this point. There were a whole lot of things. Yeah. A whole yeah, lot of things. <laughs> one, of the art- <laughs> one of the stories is, um, you know, is I don't want your husband. Is that one of the essays in oh, our book? Oh, thank it starts you for out, that. It says, <laughs> yeah, it says, I don't want your husband. And then it starts, dear, it says, dear me, mommy. <laughs> no, but, and it, okay. And then it, and then it, yeah, it, then it ends with like, oh, um, Mrs. Pitt, I want your, you know, all the handsome, you know, Ms. Ms. Clooney, I want your husband. (laughs) It's just a funny piece, but it really is about, you know, like, come on, just because you're single and divorced doesn't mean, I mean, I I experienced this myself. I'd go to faculty parties or whatever, and the women were like, oh, you know, making sure that the, he, the, you know, guy wasn't talking to me for too long. And I was like, oh, please. I really right. am and not interested in that guy at all. So this is something like I used to say, have you looked at him? Have you taken a good look at what you married? I know. Don't be right. looking at me. I'm so not interested. When, when we lived in Kenya, then we lived in South Africa <laughs> oh, later. And I, I, even as a kid, I would watch this, that they oh. would, the women oh, would okay. grab the husband's elbows and twist the skin and pinch. And pinch like you <laughs> will move on. Him. It was the twist and pinch, and I know. that was it. And we're like, oh, he's gonna get twisted. I know. <laughs> like, oh my it's, goodness. It's, you know, you get that look, and it's like, you know, if you're single, and it, it's interesting because even it, it changes when you get out of high school too. You, you know, whether or not you're uh, with child or single, but if you're single, mm. all of a sudden, if you're not, you know, the double <laughs> dater, now you start to get pushed out. I think it's about being single, not just being single mom. I think there's a anti movement against us single girls. I'm just saying. I just feel that. You <laughs> well, know, it depends it on could your be, age. It could be. I know the yeah. other thing that changes is your network, right? So when you are divorced yeah. and then I know widowed moms have said this as well, that um suddenly people get a little awkward, uncomfortable and then when mm. you need your network the most is when they start slipping away a bit. Oh, and exactly. so that they was why I felt mm. I felt it was really important to build community. And like on our website, um, you can go on and just any hour, I mean, 24 <laughs> seven, there'll be someone there and you don't even have to use your real name. You know, if you're feeling shy or awkward, we have, you can have a username. I mean, it was just, it's just a forum for you to go when you're feeling very, very vulnerable or just want to like whine or complain about something. There's so. so many facets to it. There, there were the people who, Oh poor you! And then there, there, there were the people where what you do wrong. There were the people where who decided they could raise their child better than you because they were still married, although unhappily so. And you would watch all the dynamics in the so-called together family and realize, well, you just you're just staying there and you're not even happy. But the, and it it was almost like people would either you were alienated from other families or they tried to manage your family because they made the assumption that you were not capable. Yeah, I mean, that is so uh, frustrating as a mom who's Mm. working so hard when they know. I mean, you see 
they're, they're, that your friends are telling you how screwed up and dysfunctional their family is, right? They're telling you all the time. Like, well, oh, you, you, did you this, can this, just this go happened. to a family barbecue and go look at that. Yeah, mm-hmm. exactly. <laughs> and then they're telling you, oh, well, maybe you shouldn't be doing that with your child. You know, that is just um, so, so frustrating. So why, my book that's going to come after We Got This is going to be called We Got This 2, T-O-O, and it's a, mm. a, a honoring all the children of solo moms that have been extraordinary. So like Barack Obama, oh, okay. George Washington, um, you know, Trevor Noah. I mean, I can go on and on. There's just there's oh, hundreds yeah. of amazing people raised by single moms, and I think that that will be very inspirational as well. We really, on yeah. the site, we have that too. We have a whole hall of fame about the amazing solo moms and the amazing children because this guilt, that mom guilt is you know, magnified even more if you're a solo mm. mom. So we all have the mom guilt, but then it feels even worse, as you pointed out, because people are making all kinds of judgments. So That's what I was going to say. I thought, yeah. like, going through the book, uh, you know, we got this. Um, there's, I think guilt is always like, and then there's the guilt that you put on yourself as a mom. But then as a child, man, I remember totally getting busted for <laughs> skipping school. And I really did used to just, and I, well, I, I was, anyway, I, I had my little moment of teenage years where I, you know, oh, learned how to just walk out of school and take my friends with me. And I got caught, of course, because she knows me very well. And she knows all my friends' parents really well. And basically we got a roundup. <laughs> it was like the convoy came after us. And she said to me, she told me, like, you know, this is in South Africa. She goes, and that was in high school. And she goes, they looked at me as a single mother and were like, you know, well, you're, here's a typical single mother. And um, that I was unfit because you're skipping school. Oh, my God. I like melted because, and that's yeah. exactly how it was though. They did look down at my mom, especially in Africa. Um, you know, like a single white woman was, I mean, and I'm sure it's with, diff- with the different cultures too there. You were unfit. And if I ever did anything naughty, it was directly because of her parenting. Yeah. And so there was this guilt or this l- level of, oh, if I misbehave, it's all going to come back on me, and it's my fault, and I know better, and I did know better. And I, you know, did. just did what normal kids do. We step out to see what happens. Well, that's, and then, that's the and then there's a guilt. You just said is, right. You just said it, normal kids. So teenagers are supposed to have that individuation and act out and do all these things. And so when that happens, you know, I'm remarried, and, of course, I have three teenagers, and I can say that they are doing that normal thing. <laughs> but when I had teenagers before as a single mom, you know, I, yeah, that was, that's, a different, that's a different story. Because it's just, and that's what we're just trying to fight, that stereotype. We're just trying to fight. Like, we're, we're trying to show the complexity of all the different types of moms and different, I mean, you know, we're, we have a mom that's, you know, is uh, legally blind. She writes about her struggles, and we have mom, a mom of a special needs child, and we're just trying to show that there's, you know, you can't categorize solo moms just as you can't categorize any human being necessarily. Mm-hmm. And so, we're just trying to show that there's all of these rich, beautiful stories of moms trying hard, and you know, sometimes they fail, just like anyone does, and sometimes they're very successful. But just showing that. They're much more than the stereotype. The stereotype has come, become something that the media picks up on, something that politicians pick up on, and it's not good for anybody. I mean, it's not good for the kids. You, were, you felt the pressure. It's not good for the mom. She feels guilty. It's just something we got to just recognize that that stereotype isn't helping at all. And so that's what we're really trying to break down. Well, I think that's what's great about uh, you, not just your website. is like this, here's like this community, right? But the book... I think that is something that everyone should read and understand and, and reconnect with what it's like to be a mother. You know, I'm not a mom, but reading the stories, I'm like, yeah, you know, better get my mom some more flowers now. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> that. You, you know what I mean? <laughs> it's like you've got to, it, it makes us all remember what a mom goes through, uh, solo or not, that it's this huge 24-7 job that really um, even mm-hmm. when they, you know, the the children fly the coop, well, they're still it's still there, right? And so, 
um, I think that that's what's very important about your book. I think your book is something that um, all all genders should read, and um, you know, I think kids need to read it too. Teens need to read it. You know, just that's, saying. I will. I think I agree, that and I think all, policymakers. Sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. No, I was going to say I think fathers need to read yes. it because you can be in a um, family where you have both a mother and father, but the father is, for most purposes is absent all the time with the uh, reasoning being uh, work and supporting the family. And um, it it's it's like this is your job. I know that's how I grew up. My, my parents were my dad did the work and my mom stayed home and that's women's work and my brothers weren't allowed in the kitchen because that's women's work. That mentality is is fading away, thankfully. But it was also the idea of having a father who was only there for um, disciplinary things when my mom felt she couldn't control things anymore. I don't know, but... Um, yeah, men should read. Fathers should read this. I would just say my father was never really a father, as a father. That is so. Yeah, I think I mean, my I mom think was a single mom. <laughs> in a way, I would agree. I mean, we have a funny thing on um, in Esme where you know there's women who, when their spouse is away for a week, they're like, ah, oh, I feel like a single mom, and then the single moms are like, oh, please, you know. But yeah, don't even. There's some truth. There's some truth to this in that you know we know generationally, you know some men are stepping up more and more obviously but in terms of the economy and just the realities of our life that many men cannot step up more right right so there's really really hard decisions being made in families when they're families that with partners and spouses but then if you Mm. go the next step for these women i mean i i think that um we need people who are leaders in corp the corporate world we need people who run a McDonald's. We need the policymakers. We need people in government. I mean, this kind of, if they read these stories, they would understand why do we need a, to increase minimum wage? Why do we need to consider some, yeah. of, you know, per, parental leave? I mean, it just makes it humanizes some of the needs that you know all families have, and then in particular, it's, it's even more you know striking for the solo mom families. So yeah, I agree I, I, with you both that it should be read I, by more people. <laughs> Exactly, all people, because um, you know, yeah. especially when you talk about policymakers. Um, I, you know, I have a, a friend. Uh, she became a single mom because her partner was murdered, and so she's raised her young son and gone through all kinds of hell while she w- got sick. And so this is this problem, you know. And there's good family bed. I mean, she's had like you know really f- friends as a network, and then it's like i need i need you know babysitting money i need to be able to put my child in child care so i can ra- you know raise my child and i think isn't that really one of those big things for moms is being able to balance you know as a solo mom uh work and being mm-hmm. a mom it's a really hard road and if they're not getting the minimum wage man i mean even minimum wage you, uh, please just the word you know, minimum oh, I know. because yeah. you're not going forward. Yeah, I think they should be helped. And it's like that, that there's that, and you bring this up in your book and on your website, it's like we're not sucking off the teeth of America as a solo mom. We are not just draining the system. We are here. We're bringing individuals into the world. We're trying to do the best we can. We should be working together. It doesn't mean that a solo mom is now going to, you know, have 20 kids and live off the system because that is something we hear a lot about. Yeah, that's a the stereotype is that it's young, um, you know, teenagers having lots of babies and then going on welfare, and it's just not that's that none of that is true. There are yes, there are teen moms, and yes, there are some women that might have more children, but overall, overwhelmingly, most solo moms have one child, and that's mm. just the reality. And most of them work, at, you know over uh, maybe not full-time but three-quarter time jobs and they are not necessarily on welfare so um and the biggest reason that we have solo moms is divorce you know it's not sort of not you know that there's a you know there's just i get 
very passionate about this, and I don't want to spend a lot of time thinking about it. It's just it, it's so um, irritating to hear people continue to have the stereotypes that are just based on no data, right? It's false. Data. Right. It's just not. It's not the truth. They're mostly moms that you know they they were divorced. They were managing their family pretty well when they were, they were married, and then after the divorce, they either don't get the support they need. There's deadbeat dads. Or the, they have, they're abandoned, or and then they suddenly have to juggle this Herculean juggle of work and family. And we know that jobs always often treat workers like they don't have kids. And then we're supposed to parent like we don't have a job. So you're put in this mm-hmm. bind, a catch twenty two. And it's just, I mean, all moms can relate to this. But imagine, for as a solo mom, how hard this is. Now, what, on our side, we see. I want to give some good news here is that yes. we see a lot of moms finding each other to live together, to figure out that balance. Like, let's share a place, and then we can figure out who can be with the kids on this night. Let's work a night shift. I mean, it's, I'm not saying it's they're, yeah. it's easy living at all, but they're being creative. They're being creative mm-hmm. and trying to figure out solutions. And so that, I mean, that's what we feel like, oh, we are offering this, you know, um, place where you can, try to figure out oh, well, how, well, how did you handle this and oh and what happened in mediation for you and how did you collect child support and you know just all there's this information that they can get from each other because they're the ones hmm. who are going through it and they know best but going back to the book like we very self-consciously picked some famous moms some moms yeah. that are strong Amy writers Poehler. and then some, yeah, yeah Amy Poehler is in it yeah Emma Mott, we, wonderful writer and you know oh, Mary yeah. Carr and Elizabeth Alexander, who wrote the inaugural poem for Barack Obama. I mean, we really tried to get some big hitters. And then we got some, you know, established writers. And then we have the up-and-coming ones that I'm so excited about because we had a network of moms that were solo moms writing for Esme. And then I was able to get them to write original pieces for the book. So it's like these new voices that are really great. And so I just love Man, the Man, the, the essays are incredible. The essays, Thank I mean, you. it's like they take you right into the world of a solo mom and their thoughts and just like, wow. As I was reading, I was like, man, this should be like a movie series or it's like a TV series or something. <laughs> That's because so it's, cool. Because it's so heartfelt. Like you really feel like what it's like. And it's like, dang, man. I everybody know. just And it's more than flowers. Like, really, <laughs> you better learn how to cook. No, I mean, you it's better like a, a mom. Do it's the a mom. Work. Someone losing her her spouse to mental illness. I mean, it's a really like a powerful essay about that. Mm-hmm. It's um, you know the the child whose father's incarcerated. You know, what, we have one chapter called "The Kids Are All Right." All our chapters are are named after song titles. So, I love that. Um, yeah, it's kind of fun. But oh yeah, so isn't it romantic? All about dating. So we have you know, it's not. I don't want change is going to come. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. I love that. And then we end very happily with uh, "Here Comes the Sun" because we want, yeah. you know, we want to end very hopefully and people to be inspired. And we did put a lot of quotes in there that we hope are inspirational too. It's the kind of book that realistically a solo mom can pick up and put down, right? It's sh- short essays, poems. We really, it's impossible for solo moms to sit and you know read a novel for like two hours, right? <laughs> So right. it's one of those things that you know, we try to understand also our, our reader, you know, and what, what can they have in when they just need to find something that um, speaks to their experience. So whether it's the dating or whether it's the, you know, the heartache or whether it's about the guilt of That their, goes beyond child, how to burp so. a baby, like beyond that. <laughs> like, because that's why I said to Nancy, I said, hey, yeah. Nancy, there's this book out about being a solo mom. You want to check it out? She's like, well, yeah. And I said, well, did you have anything that, like, spoke to you when when this <laughs> happened? And she's like, no, that's why I went to Africa. No one spoke to me. <laughs> like, I was like, no, I had, I had good friends that said, if you go to Africa, I'll never talk to you again. And, it's like, and I didn't be... believe them. I'm like, well, I wouldn't do that to you. Why? would? Why? It's weird. And And they never did. It was so weird. And, I mean, I, I had been to Africa before, so it wasn't like I just went crazy. But I knew what I was doing, and I things were so, um, let's say, stressful during the divorce proceedings that I just thought, this is not healthy, I'm out. And over here, I have a, I have a, 
a job, sort of, and I made my own job. And I have a, a situation where it's healthy, it's brand new, and you couldn't get a newer slate than um, I'm I'm taking my child somewhere where there is no negativity about a divorce or anything that she's personally connected to. But there wasn't anything on the bookshelf for you? No. Nothing? No. And it, I got me. Do you, Marika, do you think <laughs> there's anything on the bookshelf now for moms like that tells, you know, like... Honestly, I, I did a lot of research and because when I was going through my divorce, I got all the books like, you know, Idiot's Guide to whatever. I, I read all the how-to, but I need something, <laughs> you know... You know I, but I Idiot's Guide to Being a Mom. Car. That's nice. Idiot's Guide yeah. to Getting yeah. a Divorce, really? Right. Oh my God. I'm sure there is. Oh, yeah. But Dang. So I read all those books. I'm an academic. <laughs> I poured into all these books. But what I wanted was something for my heart and my soul. I wanted mm-hmm. something that I could, be, like, see myself, feel, feel like other people going mm-hmm. through what I was experiencing. And I didn't find it. And then, mm-hmm. you know, I started the website, and then we went, I went back again and said, oh, I wonder if that book's been written. And there are some lovely memoirs, and there's some, you know, I remember I found a book of, like, famous writers writing about divorce, but it was like John Irving, and, you know, it was just, it wasn't, <laughs> didn't super resonate. <laughs> I don't know. It, but it was like that kind of genre of, like, they just found Uh-oh. stories. And, yeah, so I, um, that's why right I, on, I feel though. like this is, it's so um, new, and it's one yeah. of the things that I feel it's, it's needed. Most of the books for women that are solo moms are um, giving advice, or there's like a kind of a, I don't want to say preachy, but a sort of Christianity yes. preachy, a religious bent to it, mm-hmm. which is fine, that's, that, but that's not going to resonate with, I mean, our book is full of moms that represent different cultures, different ages, you know, whether they're, you know, gay or straight, you know, it's just um, poor, wealthy. I mean, it's just covering a lot of bases. And um, I just, I, I imagine that you, anyone will find something that resonates in there. And, I, I um, think so, and it's I timeless. Think, I think it's yeah. t- it's like an evergreen book that, um, even though it's like a book for, like, now, things now, mm-hmm. um I think it's timeless and that it, it is because it's, it's of the heart and the heart is timeless. You know, it's like you, this is what you're feeling and this is, you know, where strength comes from and how do we overachieve, you know, uh, uh, overcome an obstacle as a mom. And so I think that's what's so cool about it. And, and I think it's something again, where everyone should read it. I did want to ask you though, is it true? So it's 15 million American single moms. Um, we have it's it's well that solo moms includes so there's eight million women who are raising kids on their own right now um, to the divorce and then if you and then and being widowed and then if you add um, women whose partners are incarcerated or women whose partners are deployed it, yes it it, it, it become, goes up to 15 million the other statistic I can tell you is 24 million children are being raised by solo moms in America. So mm-hmm. it's a, a significant demographic, and there's, the projection is pretty striking because, you know, like I'm remarried. A lot of the, mo- mo- you know, our trajectory as women can be like sometimes we're married, sometimes we're partnered, sometimes we're not, and we know that it's we're getting to a point where a child, by the time that they're 18, will probably be living with a solo mom at some point during that 18 mm-hmm. years. So. Um, I think that it's, you know, for us to ignore that reality or try to just be disdainful of that reality rather than supporting it. I mean, it's just one of the, it's just the truth, you know, we, for many reasons for like what I learned through Esme is that when a family has a child with special needs, they're much, much more likely to end up divorced. And so we have Mm -hmm. many, many women raising special needs kids, kids with special needs on their own. So, mm. I, I mean, I didn't know this going in. It wasn't my area of expertise. And now we have on our website a special whole section dedicated to it and a guide who writes beautifully about it. But, you know, we, I, was, it was, I was blown away. I was like, yeah, I get it. Like, thinking about it makes sense to me. But then it's just like, think about it. So everything we talked about in terms of exhaustion and work and family, 
think about then you're also parenting a child with special needs. So, I mean, mm-hmm. really, modern day superheroes, I just got to say that phrase again because we have to honor that hard work that's being done every day. Mm-hmm. Really remarkable. Agreed. Yeah. Nancy, you're, you're also just going to say that sometimes um, in a family there's a, I've noticed, <laughs> that there is a uh, what about me if you spend too much time with the child, then there's a what about me? You're neglecting me over here, um, and you're as a partner. Yes, your your partner, husband, whatever is. What about me? You're spending more time over there, and not maybe understanding the needs of a, a, a certainly an infant who needs almost constant care, as opposed to an adult who doesn't. There's a lot of that. That yeah, I think it's really with, tricky. Yeah, it's tricky in the beginning. Yeah, it's so exhausted. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and I mean, it's like okay, I'm working every day, bringing home the money, and you're at home all the day, and mm. somehow that looks cushy, mm. and it's not. <laughs> but but it's you know what I like my one friend she you know was raising their three children and and you know they they planned it they did it at you know this stage so that they were all kind of you know one after the other kind of deal and next thing you know he's off flying around the world and you know having fun with his secretary and so <laughs> boom you're out and she's just like hello I put everything on hold raising our kids. And now I'm supposed to, like, suddenly have a career and continue raising them when they are now in Mm -hmm. the teens. Good for me, (laughs) and screw you. (laughs) You know, it was a really difficult change for her, and she's still going through it. And it's like, even as women, everybody goes through that midlife thing, right? It's like, oh, what have I done with my life? What am I going to do? But then Mm -hmm. it happens around that time to women, it seems like, the divorce part. It happens right at the worst point. Or you get sick right at the worst point. It it just seems that it happens that way. Oh, yeah. No, I wish your story was surprising to me. Your story is one that we hear all the time. Uh, You know, all the energy put in the kids, and then the spouse or partner feels, like, left out, and then they go and Mm. they accomplish their own things, and then they've drifted apart because they have different, you know, interests. And then, you know, so, yeah, there's there's some... you know, we can do better. I mean, there's some families mm. that are trying to figure out better ways. And we actually know that a lot of women then are ending up leaving their, you know, babies with the spouses because they make more money. And then, I mean, it's just, there's just so much, you know, like that we Change. can do as a nation to try to support families and, and understand that the balance of work and family is not a women's issue. It's a human mm-hmm. issue. And so if we can mm-hmm. just get past this idea you know, that, oh, men are supposed to do this and women are supposed to do this. I think that would help a lot of this. Um, but, you know, the truth is you could maybe do everything right and something tragic can happen, you know. Or, I mean, it's just where we're everyone's sort of one step away from perhaps being a solo mom, and that's why people who are not solo moms get so freaked out about it because mm. their their vulnerability could be exposed like oh will my husband leave or will my partner split or you know what about you know i mean we now we have a whole i don't want to touch a downer but the the opioid crisis right we know a lot of women mm. are becoming solo moms because of that not necessarily that the person ODs but they're completely unable to be in the family anymore mm. you know so it's just um you know i just think if we think and i um, a little positively here, but women live a pretty long time. We have to remember there's stages in our life, you know, where we can you know, really dig in and do work. And maybe when our children are infants is not the moment. And that, but there will be the time. There will be yeah. the opportunity. And you know, you just believe in yourself. Believe that you're smart. Believe that you can do it. I mean, I, one of the refrains that Esme is like, it's gonna get better. Like, you can mm-hmm. do this. That's why it's we got And, and there's a like, village, and we can all be part of the village. All ages, all genders, all of us can be part of that village to help. You know, we look at, you know, children. I don't, I'm, I'm not going to have children that I know of in my lifetime, but I will do whatever I can in my power to make sure the children now and coming up 
will have a good place to be. Where Whatever I can do in my life, I do for that. And I feel like that's something that's important, too, that your book speaks to is, like, again, bringing us home to what it is, what a parent does, a mom does, what she goes through, and what can we do to help her through. That is the reality of it. Not only is there the nine months of holding the baby, you know, and then going and having to go through childbirth. Are you kidding me? Childbirth. Can we just say, like, hello? You know, one reason why I don't want to have a child is because I don't want to do that. <laughs> I don't, you know. But I respect all those who go through it, and I'm like, damn, you know. So to me, it's the village that well, needs to rise up and work together. 100%. I, would, I mean, we benefit. We all benefit mm-hmm. if our that if our you know people in our community are feeling better feeling stronger feeling validated feeling respected i mean how do people behave when they feel disrespected not well how do people behave when people are looking down on them not well i mean it's really it's just such sometimes mm. just basic human kindness right treat people you know with respect and they're going to, you know, behave in ways that, you know, they're going to be reciprocal. They'll be respectful yeah. of you, and they will be, you know, I mean, it's just, so I think that that's just such a thread in everything that I try to do as well, I try to teach my children, try to, you know, be that way with everyone that I come in contact with. It's like, you know, everyone has value. Everyone, if you believe in them, is going to do better. I mean, that's, that's just the sociologist in me saying, like, we know that when we tell someone that we believe in them and we uh, think that they're amazing, they're going to be better and more amazing. Like, it's just, so I just here to say that all moms are incredible, and you solo moms, like, you got this. These are incredible. You can do it, and we all want to support you because that's the um, the right thing That's to true. do for the entire community. Exactly, the world. Well, I have to say, yeah. uh, my experience of going to Africa, I found the African experience where um, they were not so divided as this country, as far as if you were in the tribal setting, everybody and everybody helped everybody without even thinking twice. It was a given here uh, we're not that community wise yet we're working on it getting there for sure but there was something over there and i'm talking many years ago uh where once you were a member of a like once you're accepted once you're part of that you had friends forever and they they, if something happened, they were there, 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 there. Everyone was there. Yeah, and maybe because they're all living in the same place, mm-hmm. whereas now our society here, you have friends, you know, two hours from you and five hours across the country. They, There's not that everybody rounded up together to help. But that's where you have, like, the website. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, you know, I mean, I mean it's, it's totally possible now with the Internet and such. However, these people all knew each other day in and day out. Mm-hmm. And so your kids were my kids and that kind of feeling. So somebody... Yeah, we're, would, we're very different. I mean, our country yeah. has become rather disconnected with that. And even, like, we're so... I mean, unfortunately, you know, particularly live in a city, you might not know your neighbor. You might not know exactly. who lives in your apartment building. I mean, exactly. and, and you might put your head down and walk by them for two months, you know, unfortunately. Yeah. It's just one of those things, no, but yeah, that true. is exactly why, you know. And then, and then, I, I'm not thinking that our internet community is anything like that community, but at least it offers a place where there's understanding and compassion. And, and we you can not go at two in any, the morning, yeah. at two in the yeah, morning exactly. or three in the morning, because like, how many moms right. are up at that time? Almost all of them. <laughs> mm-hmm. you know? Well, that is when I was felt most vulnerable myself. Like I thought about that when I was. Thinking, you know, that was when, and I got pretty sick during my divorce, like ended up, it was hard to diagnose, but I got some blood disease, easily curable, hard to diagnose, and I was scared. I was scared for my health. I was scared for my kids, and uh, at night was when I really could have used as much. <laughs> so I think, and I see yeah. them going on. Like, I'll go on, I'll wake up, and I'm like, oh, I want to use on the site, and I'll see moms go on there, and then another mom, and if, you know, if I don't see anyone answering quickly, I, I'll go in and be like, hey, you know, yeah. oh, I see you. 
yeah. But, um, yeah, mm. no, it's I, it's just a you know, it's, 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 there's so many structural societal changes that need to happen. So I understand that what I'm doing is like a small piece, but then also then by bringing the book into the world, I think that we're showing, you know, showcasing these amazing soul mom writers. So we're showing like the talents and the skills and then their stories are the ones that I think will resonate and people will start, hopefully start to see that it's a little bit more complex than what, you know, mm-hmm. what the stereotypes show. And they're just really great human stories. I mean, they're just, some of them are funny. You know, one woman's sexting while she's at her kid's soccer game. <laughs> and then she like, and she's like, on her, and then, um, you know, some, and, and then she's like, oh, here, honey, here's your kid's sex. And then she goes back to her phone. <laughs> so, you know, it's, there's just um. It, there's it's a real, a it's the real stuff. That's the grit, the humor, and you have to have that. You know, if you don't have humor mm. and you don't have that release, you ain't gonna get anywhere. Yeah. You need to have no, that, you that have fuel. Have a you have to have that fuel. You, you know. Really do. Um, I, I want to thank you so much for the book. I think you know we got this solo mom stories of grit, heart, and humor. Everyone, it comes out September 10th, 2019, through She Writes Press. Uh, you know, you can pre-order on Amazon and things, right? Isn't that right, Marika? Oh, it's absolutely on Barnes and Noble, Amazon, Indie Bound. It's all over. It's ready for for pre order. So for months, go get it. Cool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. and go to esme. Excuse me, esme dot mm-hmm. com. Go there and connect there as well. Uh, so happy Mother's Day to you. Thank you for yes. all that you do. Thank you, and I really appreciate it being able to uh, talk with you both. Thank you. And here it is. We've got a song. We always like to dedicate music, and we dedicate this to you and also to all moms out there. This is a song called Lulu's Lullaby. It was written by Allison August, an incredible singer, and she wrote this uh, in honor of her daughter, and it's on her album Holy Water. It's about time to get Allison back on the show. I know yeah, she's, it is. Yeah, yeah. She, she plays with Little Feet and Coco Montoya and all kinds of great, amazing musicians. So especially with you having all these chapters named after songs, I had to play this. Uh, so here it is, Lulu's Lullaby. And everyone, again, uh, you can keep up with Dr. Marika Lindholm. Go to ESME.com. The book is We Got This, Solo Mom Stories of Grit, Heart, and Humor. And here it is, Lulu's Lullaby. Happy Mother's Day, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us.
Your heart is wild and free. 